Meridian towards a better understanding of Coke or Catalyst. This is a contribution from the uh, University of Karlsruhe and the presentation will be given by Ms. Claudia Isma. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to present some of our results to you towards the conversion of hydrocarb fuels over volume emphasis to gain a better understanding of coating of catalyst. <coughs> the left photo you can see a monolithic honeycomb that consists of cordiorite that is supported with alumina and coated with well-defined rhodium nanoparticles. Subject to time, temperature, steam to carbon ratio, or carbon to oxygen ratio, hydrocarbon conversion may lead to coking of the catalyst as shown on the right side. There are two common processes to produce synthesis gas, namely catalytic partial oxidation and steam reforming. Catalytic partial oxidation, which is an autothermal reaction um, in that um, hydrocarbons are partial oxidized to synthesis gas. Steam reforming hydrocarbons are converted with water steam to send gas too, but this process is endothermic. <clears throat> During both processes, side reactions occur, but I don't want to go into detail here. Nowadays, there are a lot of applications for synthesis gas. It is used for the production of chemicals like ammonia or methanol, as well as for gas to liquid boots that results in the production of fuels. The produced hydrogen can also be used as fuel for fuel cells. <coughs> During both processes, side reactions occur, and uh, some of them may result in coking of the catalyst. What we found in our experiments is a coke-free zone in the front part of the catalyst in flow direction, whereas the remaining part of the catalyst is coked as in shown in this photo. <coughs> Coking occurs by chemisorption or physisorption of hydrocarbon intermediate species from the gas phase <coughs> and decomposition on the catalyst surface, which may lead to carbonaceous overlayers and even encapsulation of the catalyst particles. A clogging of the porous monolith structure um, results um, in, in um, that the gases cannot reach all active sites. The result of coking is a decrease of the catalytic activity up to the deactivation of the catalyst. Too much carbon deposition can also result in the destruction of the thin honeycomb walls. Our aim is now to um, develop a coking model that can be then coupled with elementary step reaction mechanisms in order to understand and to describe. <coughs> In my talk, firstly, I would like to show you some experimental results that we obtained during conversion of hydrocarbon species over rhodium, followed by a microscopic analysis of the carbon itself. And this part will be the main part of my talk in uh, atomic force microscopy measurements. In the end, I would like to show you modeling results of our group uh, during the conversion of hydrocarbon fuels over rhodium. <coughs> There are different options to, uh, for invest experimental investigations of catalyst coking. One possibility is to measure the conversion over the time for a certain uh, um, for the time. This can be um, done in um, measuring the um, um, reactant species with different methods like uh, infrared spectroscopy. Another approach is to burn off the carbon deposits and so to quantify the carbon amount that is deposited in the different temperature regimes. With this, we can also get um, uh, kinetics information about coke formation. Firstly, I would like to show you um, some conversion measurements of steam reforming over propane at a temperature of 525 degrees C and a steam to carbon ratio of one. Here um, is shown a long term measurement um, over 17 days. In the beginning, the conversion is um, about 78% and it decreases with the time. At the end of our measurements, after 17 days, the conversion is only 40%, which means a strong reduction of the conversion during the steam reforming. <coughs> to quantify the carbon amount that is deposited in the different temperature regimes, 
we carried out temperature programmed oxidation after uh, pyrolysis of propane with a temperature regime of 400 to 800 degrees C. <clears throat> you can see the resulting graph here. Um, the the precipitate <coughs> carbon amount is plotted against the open temperature. Um, we found, um, depending on the temperature, we found different kinetics of carbon deposition. One in the low temperature regime, which means up to 650 degrees C. Um, and in this zone, the coking velocity is very low, and coking <coughs> results from surface reactions. Above 650 degrees C, the velocity increases and gas phase processes occur, which means pyrolysis. <coughs> now we know some facts about temperature dependency of coking and uh, the first things about kinetics, but we still don't know where the initial carbon deposition, carbon deposition starts on the catalyst. This may be on the volume particles or on the alumina wash coat. So we wanted to start microscopic investigations of the coked catalyst, but um, due to the structure of the monolithic honeycomb, uh, the high porosity of the alumina and the small size of the particles, um, the inside of the catalyst surface is really limited. There are only a few methods with that we can microscopy investigate carbon deposition. So we created a model system in order to perform atomic fast microscopy measurements after the reactions. As you maybe know, atomic force microscopy is a method with that you can image surfaces three-dimensional down to the nanometer scale by mechanical scanning of the surface. Here the sample um, is scanned with a tip that has a diameter of about 50 nanometer. And this tip is uh, uh, located at the flat spring. And um, the, sample is scanned, um, the sample is scanned under this tip. Um, then the um, force between the tip and the sample is detected by bending the cantilever. For this purpose, the light detector um, is used. As you can see in this foil, the laser beam um, is focused on the backside of the cantilever and reflected to a four-segment photodiode where it creates a photocurrent. Um, if we have now topop topography changes, the hitting point of the photodiode changes and also the photocurrent that is created. So now we have a, top, um, a signal called topography information. Recently, a new AFM mode was developed. It is called OFM for oscillation friction mode. This is a mode with that we can image um, friction uh, properties of a surface that are independent of topography effects. For this purpose, the sample is um, oscillated sinusoidal and um, if we increase amplification amplitude when the tip is in contact with the sample, for small amplitudes, the tip will adhere on the surface. For bigger amplitudes, which means some 10 nanometer, um, the tip will slide on the surface. But between those two zones, there's a um, transi transition zone in that we are sensitive for friction measurements because in this zone, the tip starts to rub on the surface. As we know from former studies, carbon materials show really minor friction compared to other materials. So we thought we could be able to distinguish the location of the first carbon deposition places on the catalyst surface. For that, uh, we had to create a model system that um, consists of, thin, of a thin alumina, alpha alumina disk on that rhodium particles are deposited. <coughs> and, um, then um, we performed atomic force microscopy measurements as well as oscillation friction mode measurements and um, put the sample into a monolithic honeycomb and put this uh, model system in the steam reforming process of natural gas at a steam to carbon ratio of one and temperatures of 650 degrees C. After reaction, we performed atomic force microscopy measurements and friction measurements again. As you can see here, this is, um, is a scanning electronic micrograph which so shows the model system. Here you can see um, the alumina grains that has a size of about one to three microns and the deposited rhodium particles which have a diameter from 20 to 80 nanometers. <coughs> so we started um, with AFM 
investigations before the reaction, which means that we have the rhodium particles on the alumina surface. What we found during friction measurements is that the rhodium particles show a higher friction to the tip compared to the alumina. Here, brighter areas um, in this uh, friction uh, picture means um, a higher friction. Now the sample was in the steam reforming process for 30 minutes and what we found now is that the uh, um, rhodium particles exhibit now a lower friction compared uh, to alumina, which you can see in the down here in this picture. <coughs> this suggests that we have a carbon deposition on the, uh, on the particles and um, to prove this, uh, we um, take the sample that was in the steam reforming process and performed a lot of scans at one location. What happened after the, uh, after you, that can you see here, and uh, after the 24 scan, uh, you can see that during those much scans, the size of the particle um, decreased up to about 30 nanometers, and also the friction inverses. This means now we, what we here see here is the same friction contrast compared um, with the sample before, which means rhodium particles on the alumina surface. This really suggests that we had a carbon deposition on the particles that we moved, but that we removed by the AFM tip. So up to now, I talked about uh, steam reforming of natural gas, which was performed in the low temperature regimes and was caused by surface reactions. Now I would like to move to catalytic partial oxidation that um, of uh, surrogate fuels that was performed at much higher temperatures. So we performed uh, temp uh, temp uh, measurements and I would like to show you the results. What we can see here is um, temp measurements after catalytic partial oxidation of logistic fuel surrogates at rich conditions and um, we can see the rhodium particles to be encapsulated by carbon layers. Downstream the catalyst channel, this carbon uh, layers um, uh, increase and we have, uh, um, we have more carbon deposition. <coughs> um, modeling investigations may help us to understand the conversion of hydrocarbon fuels in the coking process. So um, we use the software DeadCam channel that um, is a tool for a um, 2D <coughs> simulation um, of a single channel that is coupled with detailed reaction mechanisms. Um, this re reaction mechanism regards uh, over 7,000 elementary step reactions, uh, gas phase reactions among over 800 species. Um, you can see here a single channel and in the first millimeter of the channel only heterogeneous chemistry is important whereas in the remaining part of the channel heterogeneous and homogeneous um, chemistry is uh, significant. <coughs> you can see here um, that after nearly after the first millimeter, all the oxygen is consumed and nearly all hydrogen is built. <coughs> um, here I would like to show you 2D species profiles um, uh, that are plotted against the actual monolith channel. And this is for the process of catalytic partial oxidation of isooctane. And um, you can see in the um, upper parts um, the uh, decrease of the EDAC isooctane and oxygen. And nearly up to the first millimeter, all the oxygen is consumed. And here you can see the um, increase of hydrogen, which is a product, one of the products. Down here, you can see the increase. increase um, of ethylene in the channel, which is known to be one of the carbon precursors. When we look on the right side, um, you can see the numerical predicted surface coverage um, along one monolith channel. And I want to focus on the um, oxygen amount that nearly after the first millimeter is consumed. And this correlates to the increasing of the carbon. Let's um, here is one millimeter. This results can now explain the photo from, from the beginning where we have the coking free zone in the front part of the catalyst which is the first millimeter because in this zone we have enough oxygen 
and after this five millimeter, the oxygen is consumed and coking occurs. So I would like to summarize. <clears throat> I started with experimental investigations of catalyst coking, which means was um, conversion measurements and TPO measurements that showed us two coking processes that depend on the temperature. Um, the microscopic investigation brought insight to the uh, processes that occur on the surface. In um, atomic force microscopy, we could um, prove uh, that the rhodium particles are the places where initial carbon deposition occurs during steam reforming in low temperature regimes. And uh, temp measurements showed um, that there were um, a lot of uh, that there was a stronger coking after catalytic partial oxidation at higher temperatures. And in the end, I hope I could show you that um, the coke-free zone in the beginning of the catalyst results from uh, um, oxygen consumed. And finally, I would like to thank my co-authors and my advisors, Professor Deutschmann and Professor Schimmel, and thank is due to Martin Seitenbusch for the preparation of the rhodium particles. And finally, I would like to thank you for your attention. Time for one or two questions. Yes, could you step up to the uh, microphone and just state your name and affiliation and ask your question? Thank you for the uh, presentation. It's very good. I'm Marco Castaldi from Columbia University. Uh, if I understood it correctly, you said that there was uh, some carbon on the uh, surface near the rhodium, and then as you scanned it uh, multiple times, it had removed the carbon. Yeah. Where, where did the carbon go? Um, it uh, may stick on the surface of the uh, tip, and um, can also be on the um, 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 <laughs> surrounding part of the scan um, size. So if it's stuck on the surface of the tip, wouldn't it not change the friction? Um, it, it's possible that uh, it's uh, around the surface of the tip. It must not be on the... Um, Right okay, thank you. Yes, yeah. very nice. Uh, I was, could you say anything from your AFM studies about the uh, distribution of the carbon um, relative to being close to a rhodium particle and being far away? And, uh, um, that sort of thing? It's only the first results that I um, presented today. Up to now, we found only carbon deposition on the uh, catalyst particles and not on the surrounding material. But we will do further studies, and we still don't know, um, depending on the um, channel, where the initial uh, where the carbon <coughs> deposition is stronger at the beginning or at the end. So we up to now this first result. Did, did you do any uh, AFM on the initial zone of the catalyst where there wasn't any coking? to see whether those particles got much bigger or um, up to now we did not. aging or anything. Okay. Let's thank our speaker one more time. Thank you.